Hey everybody, welcome to American Martinis. I'm Adam, here is Danielle. Hi. Have we not done vices before? Well, I think no. we talk about them in every episode. I know, but like not themed around, but that seems crazy. Yeah, not, no. I mean, there was so much information that I got in this that I know I've never said before because I didn't know it before. Okay. I just figured between you and I, we would have mm-hmm. had a topic of conversation strictly just about vices. I, I mean, look. When I was thinking about this episode, and this is a really stressful week. We've had a really, really stressful week. Um, leave and, it at that, right? Yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay. Uh, for now. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when I was thinking about recording, you know, my head is all over the place. And this was sort of the only episode I wanted to record. Right. Like, keep it light and easy and just talk about our vices. Well, <laughs> right. and, and just that this was sort of... The only thing that sometimes gets me through these things, mm-hmm. you know, I, um, as someone who, you know, is not a person who meditates or is a yoga person or anything like I. You're, you're not the much. one who does the good things for you mentally and right. you go the opposite route, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I can go on. So we could do a. I could do a whole podcast series on this on this topic. I'm sure. Yeah, and it's so it's all very interesting to me. I'm so interested by all of it and the history of it and um, the you know the taboo ishness. Okay. I don't know what the sure um of it. I, I, like because it, it, there's. So much has changed, obviously, for so many health concerns and everything for the better as a society and everything. A lot of good things have happened, um, you know, to keep people healthy and everything. But it's all very nuanced and there's so many layers to it. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very interested in this topic. OK. I mean, look, there's also like I did some research, too. There's a lot of hypocrisy going on, too, as far as like the whole trying to make us all healthy the whole like there's a lot of mm-hmm. well I yeah guess like i said the, it's all very nuanced yeah, you know sure and is. there's so many layers and i really think there could be a whole series on this and i'm sure it won't be our only episode knowing us right. you know about it but um but as as people who uh, i think admittedly don't always don't have our shit together in a lot of ways in some ways we do um i think that in order to be like completely honest and everything this is something to talk about and I'm almost ner- more nervous to do this episode than I am for like our sex episodes or anything because this topic is so taboo and so you know I think first of all this whole episode is just one big trigger warning you know okay. like I-, I mean you know depending on where you stand on you know the spectrum of all of these quote-unquote vices uh, but also there's so much shame and stigma around so much of it, especially in 2023, um, you know, for the last 10, 15, 20 years, um, that it's a very hard thing to talk about, honestly. Yeah. Okay. But, you know, look, there's vices for every generation, right? Some carry over, like, we'll get into all those things, like smoking and drinking and all, all those things, mm-hmm. right? But... You know, you stay. You you said you know this. It's a trigger warning for people who you know might be against the things that we're talking about or not. No, into not just sex. against who struggle. Okay. Oh, good. Right. Yeah. Even, yeah. People who struggle with it. Right. But there is vices that we're not even going to probably discuss because it's not our generation. Right. Like, um, you probably have nothing about phone addiction. Right. Your vice with your phone. Right. Because that wasn't prevalent to when we were like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there's going to be vices that kind of started 10 years ago that are going to go through for the next 10 years and then they're going to change again. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. I forgot why I brought that up, but let's move on. Okay. <laughs> I forgot why I forgot what you said. That yeah, I, just th- I think there's that. so many people who secretly have vices and oh, right. they can't Sorry. even deal with them or talk about them because there's so much stigma around them. And Correct. it's so humiliating That's what you to said. be that person. I'm sorry I keep cutting you off, but I, I remembered. I don't want to lose it. Mm-hmm. Right. It was because there's so much stigma against our vices where there's people who might be 
today who have what are going to be considered vices 10 I years have those from too, now. Phone <laughs> right, addiction, right, I have those Right, exactly. I, ha- I have them all. Right. So that's where I was kind of going with that, mm-hmm. right? Like, don't shame us for the things that we do because those were considered vices today and 20 years ago and are not yet today, but they will be in 10 years. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right. I guess so. I yeah, hope, I, yeah. I, I think, think I'm making sense. Well, I, I think know. that there are so many things that we don't talk about that are vices and that are probably unhealthy in a different capacity, um, you know, that are deemed fine and people aren't ashamed of because there's no stigma around them. But society stigmatizes all these other things that... Um, you know, the, the, I, I just I worry about the element of compassion in our society with all of this. Right. I worry about the element of, oh, it's so bad for you, you should just stop. Right. That mm-hmm. that whole thing. It's not healthy. You should stop. What are you doing? How could you do that? You know, the ramifications, you know. Well, thank you. But there is also that layer of. um you know, th- that people struggle and have different uh, different ways of dealing with it. And, you know, and, and I think that there is a, a compassion lacking in our society on so many levels uh, now that these things have become so taboo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you and I both, obviously, we're drawn to vices. We yes. always have been. Yes. Whether that's a great thing or a bad thing, we're still figuring that out. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> well, I don't think anybody's going to say it's a great thing, but it's, 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 it's part of sort of the fabric of our being. I think that you and yeah. I are, you know, I think some people have these proclivities um, and some people are able to, to avoid them and re, uh, what, what's, what's the word? Re, navigate. Yeah. Re, na- realign, re-navigate sure. in different ways, uh, you know, and, and I think some of those people are probably also doing things that we don't know about some, you know, some of, of those people. And, and so, um, no, but what I, why I say, is it a great thing? It's because we understand each other. We know we both have, I don't want to use the word addictions to vices. We have our ups and downs with them. We have our, uh, now I need help with the word. We have our, sometimes we do them, sometimes we don't, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we just kind of, we don't encourage each other with those things, but it's like, we know we need the outlet. We know yeah. once in a while we need that thing. We know, and then, you know, we it's, you know, that everything in moderation kind of mentality, right? Like we both yeah, know Yeah, and not everybody things. can do that. Correct. Mm-hmm. And, you know, look, and sometimes we go overboard and sometimes we go, Un- underboard <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we're goldie hawn and sometimes we're not exactly <laughs> yeah figure that one out everybody who's <laughs> listening right um but you know i think we we encourage each other to both understand that look there's a time and a place for those kinds of things right now for us this is one of those times and we'll go through a phase that we won't do those things and it won't be that time to do it right mm-hmm. like we went through a 20 year period of you and I both used to smoke a pack a day, if not more, we stopped for 20 years and we kind of socially smoked. And when we went out with people who were smokers, we would smoke when we were home. We didn't like, it was just, so we know that we're, we're both highly, um, highly, Drawn to Thank, magnetized. Yes, sure, yeah. all those things, right? Yeah. To these vices, right? We love them. We want to do them. We want to. We want to enjoy them, but we know there's a time and a place, and sometimes it's right, sometimes it's not, and we kind of are there for each other. We balance each other out with those things. For yeah, for us. I mean, right. certainly, for, for, this is all just for us. Yeah, yeah. And also, I think that you know, there's a lack of um, outlets to be honest and talk about this stuff, and you know, without the the follow up of oh I'm trying to quit or I'm trying to stop or oh it, it, like you said oh it's just socially or oh it's just this or or just just an outlet to be like okay you know look w- there's a responsibility obviously and a knowledge of boundaries and a danger that can happen if you don't keep it under control but also um you know 
we I think you and I live our lives by let's we don't hurt anybody. We don't ever want to hurt anybody. We don't ever want to, you know, do anything that's going to affect someone else negatively. So number one, this is not at all any kind of, you know, we're not saying, oh, this is great. Do it. No. But also, um, I think when it comes to smoking and stuff, obviously when you're drinking, you don't drive, you don't, you know, we're not. You are really nervous. I to am. We're not violent people. We don't, you know, we don't, but I am. But, but also I think that if it's just like when you're smoking, it's, it's you unless you're mm-hmm. in a public place, which you can't smoke in public places anymore. So right. it's not really, it's a non-issue. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay. So do you want to start? <laughs> Cause I don't, <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I hope there are people out there who are like, Oh good. I'm so glad they're doing this and not like, what the, f- like just fucking stop. Like, don't, you know, I hope that there, there is actually, and could, even if it's not smoking and drinking, it might be something else or well, the vices are, you know, everywhere right it's not right. just about our vices it's a you know everybody has their own vice yeah so we we can't speak of them we can just speak of ours mm-hmm. can i tell you one vice that is super uh that probably is more stigmatized than anything that you've tried to get me to quit like 20 times okay uh, um okay go ahead sweet and low yeah yeah S- artificial sweetener yeah I can't terrible kick, i can't kick the habit but I, I carry it in my purse it's in my car it's in my jacket pocket yeah it's awful it's so bad, but what? How much can I? If, like, I've got my own vices. Yeah. How much can I, you know, say to you, stop doing that? It's bad for you. And, yeah. Like, who am I to say that? Yeah. You know, and all like except the your husband, who doesn't want you to don't die. Don't carry it anymore. <laughs> like it should be like like make it. A, it's just a choice. Just just have it available <laughs> for those of like that's why I I like diners still because they carry it. Right. You just have you to. Know, walk I like up. gas station coffee shops. Yeah, cause you just walk up and say, "Hey, do you have the pink chemicals and not the mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. the white ones, the yellow packet, mm-hmm. or the one? yeah? Who knows? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, listen, you know, I don't like it. Sure, how can I even? Can't quit. I can't quit I, it. You know, I can't. You know what's my all right? You know what my worst vice is that I will never be able to quit ever. Mm. Go ahead. I'm trying to think. Yeah, ever, and I am highly addicted. I I will spend money on this thing nonstop, and I I use it every day more than I should, and I will never be able to stop doing. Uh, besides the <laughs> obvious, I can't think of anything. Is it obvious? Paper towels. Oh, <laughs> I it's really bad. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I consider it a vice. It's like not good. It's not good to use paper towel. I can't stop. I need. I I think sponges are disgusting. I think the you know. Mm-hmm. The, the, whatever those things are that you wash the dishes with or wash the counter Spon- with. Sponge. It is a sponge, right? Like yeah, not that's just a sponge. A, okay. Uh, I I need me some paper towels. Like, I, is there I a support group for this? <laughs> <laughs> you like, should go online and research. There might be like a term for it or something. When there was a shortage during COVID for paper towels, that was it for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was my, right. that was, you know, my COVID experience of the shortage right. of paper towels. And my sister and my sister-in-law, you can't find a paper towel in their whole house. I know. They I use s- all cloth. They have a roll, a paper towel roll, but they're not cloth. paper towels. I tried cloth. to do that. Fuck that. That's not happening in my house ever. <laughs> you get your sweet and low. I get the paper towels. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, I did some, I, I, re- I research. I Googled. <laughs> You know, you what, did a study, yeah, exactly in a lab. <laughs> you know, what are like top vices? Like, what are the top vices of people in the world? You know, like that kind of thing. And I was trying. The reason I was doing that was like, okay, I want to see what are the top ten, nine, like whatever amount of vices, and where do I fit in, right? Like, where's my check? You know, I, what's my score? You know. And I, I did really well. You failed. You, you failed. No, I passed with oh, like oh, flying colors. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The other way. The other way. Yeah, exactly. Well, most people would probably see it as failing. You see it as <laughs> passing. <laughs> so, I mean, it's 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 all the obvious, right? So I just wanted to lay these out kind of like whatever you think the top vices are that people have, right? So smoking, number one. Drinking, check. Gambling. Oh, boy. Check. Excessive shopping. I've been there. Uh, fast food and soda. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of speeding. I got stories about that. Coffee, drugs, you know, like check, mm-hmm. check, check, check. Like I've been through what it seems like the vices, mm-hmm. right? I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff here missing, whatever. Sure. But my Google, you know, 
research has shown me and taught me that these are like the top okay. of, of the chain. Right. Right. So I win. Okay. Yeah. And I, th- I think, I, and I think you, you do just kind of as well as I did. Yeah. Except the drugs. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we don't have to get into the drugs, but like. Well, you talked about the drugs in the last episode yeah, like, a little bit. It wasn't bit. a big thing. For, well, I well, guess it was. was. Yeah. Like the one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. yeah, I always, that's one, it's, I, I've always teetered on almost this, this line, right? This, um, this tightrope, I'll, I'll say between, um, you know, but like of edginess of, of kind of quote unquote danger. Right. But obviously, first of all, I'm a very privileged person in so many ways. I have huge support network of people and resources and tools and all the things, um, you know, that, that, that have for me been able to keep me from maybe crossing over this sort of, you know, imaginary line. But obviously I know that there are people who have resources and privilege and everything who aren't able to like everybody's situation and genes and background is completely different for me. I, th- I feel like there's been this tightrope and, you know, if I were to like fall to the left, it would have been like a fiery pit of darkness. If I fall to the right, there's like a huge safety net. And I think I've been able to mostly fall to the right that I have Mm -hmm. you know so much uh I have so much support and I have you who kind of gets it and you know and I feel (laughs) I'm when you fall to the left (laughs) I'm on the other side right you have all the other people who help you no no I think that I think you do help me because that lack of I don't do anything in secret with you Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I think that there's this acceptance of, um, of, of, of kind of this core being of who we are. And, um, you know, the reason why I think I fell in love with you is because you understood this about me and you didn't fight against it. But at the same time, we've kind of kept each other in check. Like we sort of have this partnership in it all, but at the same time, I think the fact that we are, we do allow each other to indulge some keeps us steady in it. Yeah. I think it, honestly, it's whether this is a good thing or not, it's at our core, right? So we, we have this thing about us that we need the vice, right? Like I went through that phase about, I don't know, what was it? Eight years ago ish where I was like hardcore healthy. Like I was training like the, the P90X. I was, uh, what's it called? Um, certified to teach. Like I went to classes, I was eating nothing but, but like organic and, you know, healthy food. Like I was all, uh, all in, right. The working out, the, but at the end of the night, you know, it was a glass of wine and a cigarette. And, you know, when I was done working out, it was like, you know, mm-hmm. you know, if it was nighttime, we'd get, we'd get back together and have the, you know, the drink and the cigarette. And the, like, I never stopped no matter how, entrenched and how into the health scene I was getting, I, there was always that there with me too. Well, and we, we talk about you and your escapism and that was a form of escape, right? Like me with my marathoning, right? You were, you know, when you were doing these things, you were so far removed from us. You were, you know, off what? working out. You were in like, <clears throat> it, like fully obsessed with it mm-hmm. Um, you know, you got into, it was, you know, got into a little bit of this little bit of a, I don't want to use the word cult, but like this cultish idea of, I I mean, it was like an MLM thing that I was getting involved with, with this beach body experience. And you became sort of not relatable in a sense because, um, you know, what you were doing, it was, you were off on your own. None of us could, you know, could, uh, like relate to it or it it was a tough time for me not because you weren't doing the things that we usually do but because you pretty much just removed yourself in order to focus on that and I felt this sort of disconnect even though I was training for marathons at the same time we were like in in separate places sort of challenging each other on some level of like oh who's going to be healthier who's going to get more in shape but we were completely separate from each other Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So and, it was weird. Right. And even when I was doing that, I was like, oh, she's running marathons. I can run too. 
You know? Right. And so I went you and did, did me some. Half. I have. Yeah, you I, fucking have, I you couldn't, pussy. I couldn't do the fall. I did the half. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, no. It's true. I was done. Well, like, I, I was, couldn't run a mile right now, so <laughs> I'm not judging anybody. And I don't even know who that person was at the time. I mean, maybe she'll come back. Maybe she won't. I don't but know. But it's like at every marathon, right? What happens? Like when you're done with the marathon, you all get together and go for beers. Right? Oh, beers. And si- After the New York marathon, yeah. smoke, the, everyone was in their ar- We had orange. Right. Um, you know, the Mylar blankets, mm-hmm. everyone got an orange and blue Mylar blanket. And all you saw after was mar- uh, orange and blue Mylar blankets in every crevice and alley and this and that walking home, smoking cigarettes <laughs> to the bar, to the bar. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, you know, look, uh, there's something to be said, so like, let's all just calm down a little bit. Right. Like, you know, there's all. Yeah. All right. We're not advocating. No. The smoking We're cigarettes. And drinking oh, beers. shit. I think we have to take a fucking break. Oh, shit. Okay. All right, so let's do that. See, I told you, like you were freaking out about writing. How much did you write? A lot. Four or five pages about yeah, this. Yeah, I need like three episodes right. of this because we've gotten nowhere. And oh my God, I need these episodes. <laughs> I know. Ooh. All right, okay. I'll be right back. Have you noticed how food prices are crazy high right now, just like everything else? But every plate can help you cut down on food expenses. Every plate is 25% cheaper than grocery shopping. Plus, you only pay for what you need with pre-portioned ingredients, so no more storing those bottles of spices you'll never use again or throwing away and wasting unused meats and vegetables. But wait, there's more. Want to get dinner on the table quicker? Try 15 minutes or less with every plate. Choose from fast and flavorful options like pimento-styled grilled cheese sandwiches and smoky cumin pork tacos. I am so sick and tired of eating the same takeout day after day, and it's been getting really expensive to do that anyway, and now I have more variety and healthier options. Every plate includes only the highest quality ingredients, including sustainably sourced seafood, so you know your meals will be fresh and flavorful. With 25 tasty and affordable recipes to choose from every week, you'll never run out of options. And they also offer up to 22 sides, snacks, desserts, and more. Go with my favorite, the Kung Pao Beef Bowl, in your next order, or choose from my kid's favorite dessert, the Molten Chocolate Lava Cake. Get started with Every Plate for just $1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com slash podcast and entering promo code martinis149. That's everyplate.com slash podcast and entering promo code martinis149. All right. So obviously this is going to be a part one because I, I, I alone just... I don't know. This was keeping me kind of sane researching this. <laughs> I was really enjoying it. Um, so, like, pick a vice, any vice. Which which do you want to start with? Wait, should I go through my top my list no, here? No, just of... well, I don't have some of those, but or, pick a vice that we were going to talk I about. I mean, obviously, let's just smoking. Okay, okay. right, because that's like the vice that you know we've the taboo. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Which is interesting, but yes. So, go. <laughs> <laughs> And we, infor- you know, we can't talk about, look, there's this whole, there, very smoking has become very, very taboo. Smoking pot, not as taboo, but, you know. Well, no, uh, on the other end, I mean, smoking pot now has become like, it's almost like. It's trendy. The, not just trendy, but like it's, I don't want to say, it's not healthy. It's, it's almost like, what's the word? Um It's got, you know, there's, if you go out there and research marijuana and you've researched and you do the whole thing there's so many benefits to yes. it and it's so good for you in so many ways and it's so, look you're still smoking right so it's not good for your lungs or whatever but it's it's but without the chemicals and the glass but, and shit yeah right so like there's there's benefits to smoking pot right mm-hmm. so it's it's almost the opposite end of smoking right it's, yeah and i think people should do whatever pleasures them to, you know wh- whatever way you can handle it and whatever and you know so again i am there's no judgment at all i mean i absolutely none i you know i completely respect it and and everything but you know it's something that gets talked about a lot because it's easy to talk about because right and by the way i just want to say too we did not research this on like any medical level whatsoever we didn't know shit about fuck about any of this stuff right but this is opinion based completely well i could read you the surgeon's warning on my pack of cigarettes. <laughs> right mm-hmm. and that, show the pictures that they put on those yeah, packs of cigarettes that, now that i can do but no no we're not no we're not fucking uh, yeah, doctors but just, but i'm just saying i i think that in some regard you know smoking is not talked about unless it's in a shameful capacity Mm -hmm. but i I do hear sometimes you know 
celebrities or people talk about the fact that, you know, if they don't smoke anymore, how much they miss it. And look, I, I think there's something to to be said for I really enjoy smoking a cigarette. Yeah, you do. I really, really do. I don't think that I will ever not enjoy smoking a cigarette. Um, I, I think it's given me some of the best conversations of my life have been had outside with people smoking cigarettes. I've bonded with people who I didn't know very well before. Like there's this whole, especially back when I was in high school and college, there's this whole culture sort of built around going outside and having a smoke. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when I was a sophomore in college in the summer, I, I had a job doing data entry at Merrill Lynch. I, I don't know numbers from, uh, my God. I mean, like literally I'm the worst with numbers. Can you imagine all summer I was inputting numbers into a computer? Like uh, what the fuck? <laughs> but I was, I was working with a bunch of girls who, you know, were around my age, but they weren't in college. This was their full-time job and everything. And they were so great. They took me under their wing. They were awesome. Um, and they were probably people who I maybe wouldn't have otherwise met, right? Because, you know, we ran in different circles and they lived in a different town and everything. And we went down and, you know, we took our, I took my smoke breaks with them. I was in like the bad girls smoking club. And we bonded so much over those cigarettes and we learned things about each other and we shared and we became good friends and you know those are certain things that like had I been sitting in my cubicle you know I could have yes I could have gone down and not smoked but had I been sitting in my cubicle during those times or whatever there that bonding wouldn't have happened there's a culture around it wasn't there a friends episode about that when Rachel was at her job and her boss and co-worker smoked and she didn't but they go outside and smoke and they talk about things about work and that she was not involved yes, in because she didn't yes. smoke. So she went out and pretended to smoke. Right. 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 Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That happened to me actually because I used to do temp work. I, I, all I did back then for temp work was like data entry, just like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, as a matter of fact, I am amazing at entering numbers. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't now. surprise me. I don't look, I can just mm-hmm. input numbers because I did it for so fucking long. But I remember being- I think people probably lost millions of dollars that <laughs> summer when I was doing data entry. <laughs> right. I'd you like to right. know the statistics on that. You put the decimal in the wrong place. Yeah, and, yeah. I put the, yeah, the but emphasis I, on the wrong syllable. Exactly. I was at a data entry temp job and I would go out for a smoke break with everybody else back then who smoked. And the boss was out there smoking with us, and we're just—I was there for two weeks, you know. It's—it's it's, you know temp work. I'm there for a month, you know, maybe at or most. Until you then, get fired. Or yeah, right. Or <laughs> and then you're on to the. It's temp work. Mm-hmm. It's literally temporary work. Like you're not Thank there you for a long for time. Thank you for that. I'm explaining it to you. Thank you. You're right. Um. So. <laughs> So I'm outside, you know, on a smoke break with the boss and a bunch of other people, and I'm we're just talking, and they're looking to hire a new whatever, a manager of whatever, and we're smoking and talking, and he's saying, and I said to him, you know, so who are you looking to to hire for the whatever? He's like, oh, maybe it could be you, you know? That never would have happened if I was sitting in the cubicle, like you said, and he's outside smoking with somebody else, mm-hmm. talking to somebody else who might have asked that same question, right? So it's like this... It's this weird bonding, like you're together sharing this experience and... Now it's golf. Well, now No, now they all go play golf. That's their bonding thing. Right. I'm sure they're playing golf and drinking. I don't know about temp jobs. I don't know if they're out there playing No, no, no. I'm just saying like companies rather than smoke breaks, I feel like everybody goes and plays golf now. Okay. Hasn't that been forever? No. I don't know. I feel like people used to sit around in a in a cigar lounge and like smoke and drink, but now right. they play golf. Well, they drink and play golf, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. So I don't know. But I'm the, not part the, of that world. The, the ironic thing to me was that well, I'm I'm out there smoking with this guy. I've been there for two weeks, and he says to me, "Oh, maybe it'll be you." You know, I guess he's right. looked at my performance. I was I was good, I guess. And it, I like I thought to myself, like I don't fucking want to do. With this <laughs> you know mm-hmm. i was out the next day right. after he said that to me <laughs> you know like, i was like i'm not doing data entry for the rest listen there's a- nothing wrong anybody with- who does data entry, yeah, and what were you, know, you doing from- instead <laughs> nothing i'm right, sure exactly. yeah like you here you were like this I'm just big sa- shot who <laughs> i'm just saying right you know mm-hmm. but you get those experiences and listen i've had a million of them right mm-hmm. we'll get to that when we go back to when we started mm-hmm. you know but but yeah understood. i do And I think that that has sort of, you know, it's, I've always felt like, and I think you feel like this too, like I've always felt 
like I was sort of this lost soul a little bit, right? Like I'm always sort of like feeling kind of like an outcast or an outlier or, you know, someone who's sort of on the edge of things a lot of times. They're, you know, I... I don't belong, you not, know. Not with me, you don't. No, yeah. exactly. But, <laughs> right. you know, look, in where we live and everything, everybody bonds at, you know, uh, things that I, I'm, not, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with or I'm not a part of or, you know, they just, it's just not my natural inclination. It's why we don't have friends anymore. We have friends. <laughs> no, we do. But, but throughout my life, I think sort of like if you go outside and have the cigarette, People who smoke or who have a drink or who even, you know, smoke pot or, um, you know, whatever the vice is, you know, if you're sitting at a, at a table at a casino surrounded by people, mm. um, you're going to meet other people who have that same feeling probably as you, right? Like, like y- you're meeting people who, uh, who probably don't have their shit 100% together. Just like me, right? Like there's something that they're trying to um, fill or, or you know, to feel a little bit different. Like Natasha Leone, I was just listening to a, a, an interview with her. She was saying, you know, because she went through a huge period of, it was like an intense period, way more intense than what we've been through. But, you know, she went off the rails a little bit with drugs and drinking and all of that. Um, but, you know, she still, she still smokes. She still, you know, and she says like, look, Life is fucking hard and, you know, the alternative is death, but there's this sort of third existence that can happen, you know, in the middle where you are not completely immersed in in everything and you can you can have this a little bit removed, a little bit feeling okay about things. Do, do you know what I'm saying? By indulging so. in, in yeah. these other things. You mm-hmm. know, I think she was talking at the time about, you know, drugs and everything. But even still, the, the vices of life that, you know, there's something that you can sort of escape the reality a tiny bit for a little while. Yeah. But do we do you ever look to, you know, c- celebrities or people that have been out there who are, you know, for however many years, you know, like a Mick Jagger or, you know. People like that who are now in their 70s or their 80s or so, and they've been destroying themselves for 50 years, right? Do you ever, so, do we ever use that as like, well, maybe it's, you know, it's just person based. No, maybe it's, it's such not, a crapshoot. But think that's you what I'm be, saying. Like, the, when, when well, doing vices, it's all a crap shoot. like, do you ever think to yourself, well, like, I mean, obviously it's, you know, if, some people can do it. I mean, I'm doing it. I'm more now 45. Oh, God. Can we not even go down this road? But you know what I'm saying? No. Like, you never think to yourself like, oh. No. Okay. I see. <laughs> I, yeah. But it's it's talking yourself into like being okay with the fact of what you're doing. Well, I, you know think, I, mean? I think there's something to be said for, um, you know, a little bit. You want to say you, there's two ways you can say it, right? You get one life. You want to live it as long as you possibly right. can. You want to do everything you can to be healthy. There's the other part of it. It's like you have one life and, mm-hmm. you know, you want to also be able to indulge and do things in moderation. And look, I have best friends who I still sit for a night with a bottle of wine and a pack of cigarettes and everything. And I sit there for three hours with them or four hours with them. And it's like the best thing in the world for me. I just there's some I, I can't quite explain it. But you don't have to. Right. Like I completely understand what right, you're saying. Right. Or you and I, right? We, we went to New York, you know, and we didn't, it wasn't like we didn't drink that much or anything or we didn't right. like, we just were hanging out, like having a great time. And, and it feels like home to me in a sense. That feeling feels like home. And I think when that feeling feels like home to you, it's hard to completely be like, okay, I'm never going to visit there. Like mm-hmm. I'm never going back there. And, and, you know, a lot of people, their, their home base doesn't feel like that, that, you know, they're, that's not their comfort zone. Right. That's not where they feel like they belong. You know, it, it's the reason why, um, most of the people in my life have, who have been really, really close with are people who are a little edgier, are, are willing to sit and admit and talk about the facts that, you know, we, we can't really do it all without these these breaks, these, you know, these vices, these whatever, people who are willing to admit it. 
And I have a lot of friends who've gone the other way, you know, who have gotten very instead into, you know, meditation and yoga and all of these things. And I think it's great. I, and we're still super close best friends. Um, but that's not my level of that's not where I can settle. And, and I'm not yep. saying I never want to do that stuff either. I'm just saying there that's not that's not my zone of comfort. No, I, I like both those lifestyles. Right. Like I was saying before. When I want, when I was doing that whole training thing and like working out, but still in the vices, doing, the, you know, that's the way I feel, right? So you can live the life of working out and meditation and healthy eating, and and then have all your vices and do all that, right? So it cancels each other out, and you live the full life. No, that's not how. It, that's not how it works. <laughs> that, that's how I think it works. So it works for me. Okay. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, I okay, <laughs> and I, and you know, I I have people in my life who live just a super healthy existence, and they're so happy like that, and it's easy for them, and and I'm like, great. That's I'm so happy for you. I. I think that this moderation thing has kept me from getting into big trouble. You know, I think that that it keeps me from, you know, like if you if you keep food from yourself for too long, right? And obviously this is a different situation if the, if if you're an addict or, you know, you've needed to to stop or whatever. I have been able to toe that line. And and I think that it has kept me from, you know, like you said, you you snorted your Ritalin and then it was like, fuck, what did I just do? You know, I crossed the line and now I can't get back from it, you know, for a while. Mm -hmm. It took you a while. Oh, I yeah. have never, I have known I can never try drugs. I I mean, besides pot, I, which I've tried and I just, it's Pot's not. Pot's not a drug. Okay, whatever. It's a plant. Fine. fine whatever and, it and is. I wish I enjoyed it. I'm just saying one time in high school. I did, um, oh shit, is that me on the bottom row? I'm talking way too fucking much. No, I'm listening. I'm loving hearing you. I know, but I, am I talking too no, much? No, keep going. I'm I might get it. bad reviews. <laughs> um, so I went in high school one time. I was at a party and they had a, um, a dentist tank. Oh, nitrous? Nitrous. Yeah, nitrous, nitrous oxide. Nitrous yeah. oxide. Thank you. Um and I didn't know what it was. A dentist tank? <laughs> yeah. I just knew like you you inhale from a balloon and it's, you know, you get that funny voice and whatever. And, you know, I didn't know what it was, but everybody was doing it. It wasn't, nobody was shooting anything or snorting anything or so people were doing it. I was like, okay, I'll try it. I didn't get it. And then I did it and I got it. And let me tell you, I was online all fucking not night for that thing. Right. Because oh, really? yeah. I, I never did it. Oh so my God. I don't know. Uh, don't do it. I did whippets. <laughs> Is I don't that know. The same? I have no idea. I don't even know. I didn't even know what I was doing at the time. All I knew was that in that moment, I would have done fucking anything to get that feeling again. Did it last like thirty seconds? Yes, it was yeah. thirty seconds yeah. of you know. And I felt like that also when I got morphine um, when I was getting my C-section and everything. I just remember looking at the anesthesiologist. You don't remember shit. No, I do. Time. Oh, I do. Because I remember looking at the anesthesiologist being like, I would do anything for you right now. Like, <laughs> you are my favorite person in the world. I fucking love you. I remember watching you. Yes. On... Yes. Yeah. But anyway, what I'm saying is that I, um, I knew that I, there was a line I couldn't cross. And I didn't besides that one night with nitrous and, you know, like I, never again. Um, but I, I, I feel like be, because I allowed myself to indulge a little bit in certain things that I could keep under control, it kept me from, you know, it's like if you starve yourself all day, right? And then at night you just fucking binge. No, I don't know. All right, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so, I don't you know, start myself right, but I'm day. just saying in in life, right? So many people have done that. You you don't eat all day and you think you're going to not eat because you're on a diet or you're not eating certain things and then at 10 o'clock comes at night and you're like shoving it all in. That's what I would have I think that I think that's what I would have been mm -hmm. like. So, you know, so towing that line and walking that tightrope has kind of maybe kept me from from going full out, from being, you know, from being over the top. Yeah. And listen, I, I'm sure you watch me. I watch you too, just to make sure that we don't get to that place. Well, you have been to that place. Or right, anymore. Right. But I'm just saying, yeah. yes, I watched you and, you know, I tried to bring you back in. Yeah. Like I would know if, if I, if, if I was watching you and, you know, if you were on to the next thing. I'm ready for that conversation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, look, it's been a stressful couple of years. Like we've been 
indulging, you know, to our moderation, right? Like nothing out of control, Mm -hmm. but just saying like, if it was because of what's going on in our lives right now, which has just been stressing us out, if we were, if, if something was going to happen to take it to the next, to that next level, I got nervous about that for both of us. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was kind of watching you kind of watching myself, making sure we're not getting there, ready to have the conversation. If it was going to get there. Mm -hmm. Right. Have you been thinking that way too at all? No, I mean, I haven't thought you've been. I haven't. Been no, worried. I don't. Th- no, I, I'm more worried about you than I am myself. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so um, I need another drink, and oh, God. That's <laughs> we have the to last take thing another you break. To say. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, so obviously, I thought that this whole episode we would be like getting through all of the vices, but yeah. um, that's. Not I'm glad happen. I at least mentioned them in the beginning. Because this is we're only talking about like one. Oh, no, we're going to <laughs> this is going to be a little like bit of a series. I hope people yeah. are enjoying this because I, I think there is a need for it. Um, and I think that it's always the other way of talking about, you know, the the other side of, of everything and how terrible it is. And, and 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 it can get terrible. But I also feel like, um, you know, that that I know for sure that there are plenty of people out there who are uh, who to indulge in things that you know society deems quote unquote bad and there's no place for it anywhere and no one's hurting anybody no one's you know it's not and i i feel bad that it's so too taboo and you know even for me for addicts i look at addicts and i have so much compassion i have so much compassion mm-hmm. for addicts. Um, and, you know, and I think that there's a lack of compassion for all of that. I worry about us as a society um, in the direction that we're going in, that we are, are lacking compassion on a lot of these things because we have become not dissing it at, at all, but this sort of, you know, oat milky, uh, you know, healthy, like all raw diet, products thing in that like we have forgotten about the the people who uh you know like oat milk is fucking expensive things oh, are fucking listen, expensive if you want to get into the we will that thing yes. like uh, but I what will... I'm, and, and and nothing against it i just want us as a society to remember like there are people who don't oat milk like they right. don't that it's it, that is a very tiny little percentage of the people in society who that can be their vice, you know. And and again, if I wanted that to be my vice, it could be. I Wait, I could do it. What you want oat milk to be your vice? Not a vice. I'm just saying, like people who you know, at the, at they're like, oh, I need to get my oat milk, my oat milk latte. I have friends who say that, and I yeah. laugh at them, and we laugh about it or whatever. I fucking love them. I'm not putting them down. I'm just saying that there is a very small population of people who I think mentally and emotionally and financially can do that. Okay. I think that might need to be part two okay. of this episode. I'm just, yeah. I'm just throwing it out Beca- there. That I, 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 I worry about the too. compassion. Understood. Mm-hmm. Keep it about compassion, not about the differences between healthy living and unhealthy living. Like we'll, do that in another episode, okay. I think. Why am I saying offensive things? No, not at oh, all. Okay. But I have so, we're almost done with the episode and okay. I have so much about that too. All right, let's start, Go. let's go back to where it all began. Let's, let's start with Bring a podcast back. series called... Um, Drinking, Smoking, and Cussing. <laughs> un, wait, unhealthy, wait, no. Um the, the upside to vices, even though we know they're bad. How That's about the that? worst title ever. <laughs> I just came up with it. <laughs> I like drinking, smoking, and cussing. <laughs> drinking, smoking, and cussing. Right, but just letting you know, there's other sides to every. Okay, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, know. I don't I don't know, know either. Who the fuck do we yeah. know? All right. So what? I'm gonna bring it back. Okay. Picture this. Let's do it. Picture it, Sicily. No. Uh, when I was eight years old, <laughs> oh, that sounds bad. Yeah. Uh, I had a babysitter who was a smoker. Uh, I did not come from a family of smokers. N- quite the opposite. Yeah, th- th- ironically, the opposite. Yeah, quite yeah. the opposite. And I need to ask my sister's permission. But if I can talk about her and me finding out we were both smokers later and that led to our bond. But 
I need to ask her permission first, even though I kind of just said it. But I need to talk about that. Okay. But my babysitter was really the only person I knew who smoked. Um, you know, everyone smoked everywhere back then. You went to a Burger King, a mall, a gas station. Uh, you know, I don't think, you know, gas stations, you weren't allowed to smoke. Um, <laughs> that makes sense. Well, yeah, that was like <laughs> the first thing that outlawed smoking was gas stations. But, um, you know, all the places you, you could go. You ever see those things on Facebook or wherever else on social things that, like back to the 80s, mm-hmm. what, and they show pictures of things from the 80s, and you see that McDonald's or Burger King ashtray. Yeah, the, the aluminum table. ashtray. Yeah. yeah. That, like, one, that's one, that's like the biggest, like, that's the showcase picture sure. of the things from the 80s. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Yeah. My, when I was in high school, I, uh, I was on a, a flight to Mexico to study abroad, and I, uh, my friends and I were in the back row of the airplane. We smoked the whole way. Well, that was the smoking section, so it was okay. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> can you imagine? No, I never smoked, smoked on an airplane. I actually. did. It was yeah. fantastic yeah. because it was like less stressful. Yeah. But obviously, it's a no-no, and I don't encourage it, and I'm not saying no, I should bring the it back. The funny thing is that there was a smoking section on an airplane. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and I fully <laughs> utilized it. But, but so my, my babysitter, she was the only person I knew who smoked that, that I knew of, you know, there might've been adults who did and didn't do it around me or like you were eight. How well, many people do you know? Okay. <laughs> so, and I might've been nine or 10. Oh. I, I remember it being eight, but my look before that I was fully against smoking. I used to sit, remember the back seats of the station wagons that faced yeah. outside. My cousins and I used to sit back there with no seatbelt and watch the people behind us smoking and like shake our fingers and you know shame them and be like ew it's so disgusting i mean mm-hmm. we i was like the the anti smoking campaign but at some point i got fascinated with smoking and I, I don't know why i don't know what it was i was always fascinated anyway in more quote unquote mature adult stuff right i had a sister who was 7 years older than me a brother was 10 years older than me. I had lots of older cousins. You know, I was by all means the, the youngest of everything always. Um, but I was fascinated. And I had a friend who was equally as probably like uh, misfitty as I was. And we stole some of my babysitter's cigarettes and some matches. And we went into the woods and we tried it. And I don't know if we inhaled. I have no idea. There's no way. I don't think so. We, yeah. How could we have known to? I don't even know when the first time I inhaled a cigarette was. I just knew I was fascinated by mm-hmm. it. Um, and always, you know, I was always fascinated with more mature topics and more mature subjects and everything. And um, and I didn't, I don't think I smoked again for a long time. So it wasn't like I started at eight and I was, you know, like... You know, play, no, you playing took, my Nintendo smoking cigarettes. No, you took a break. And then when you were nine, no, you no. started up again. No, when I was probably uh, in high school, I, I started again. Oh, really? Yeah, no, oh, no. no. I, Maybe we we might have stolen cigarettes a few times and done it. You made it sound like you've been smoking since you were eight. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I did How could I have smoked since I was eight? Exactly. Who was buying my cigarettes? <laughs> it was the eight nineties. Anyway. No, I think I had stolen cigarettes or taken, eight? borrowed. Yeah, it was I nine- Borrowed. I borrowed cigarettes. Five. No one was selling an eight-year-old cigarettes in 1985. In 1985, you can buy whatever the fuck no you wanted in any age. No fucking way. Yeah. I, I'm going to look that up. No <laughs> way. But I just was, Google it. You'll I was right just fascinated. And then in high school, I started again. I look something in me again to my core. I was always like, I want to do that. Um, and and so I did. Mm-hmm. But but that was my my start of it okay would you like to tell your start of it <laughs> well my, so it was very similar let's add five years to your story more than five uh i i didn't start i didn't have my first cigarette until i was 15 so it took me going uh, there's so much backstory to this it doesn't matter but i was also the anti-smoker like this gross it's disgusting the whole thing and it took me one year going to boarding school where there was like a smoking porch outside the, for us, it's the sack. When, what do you call a it? La- student lounge. A student lounge. Mm-hmm. Uh, was it a smoking port? Like, was that allowed back then? Or was it just people that didn't care enough to, like, it wasn't a, 
My brother Legal. graduated in 1986, and I went to his. I remember going up to his smoking lounge. He didn't smoke, right. but I remember going. Oh, I went up to the senior lounge. I remember mm-hmm. to see him, um, and he was smoking. Yeah, but this wasn't. Uh, this was 19. 19- I mean, he was smoking. You were allowed to smoke. He didn't smoke. Right, but this is 10 years later. But I'm just saying that's that I know in 1986 right. at the school I graduated from. Um, in 1986, I don't know when it stopped. We weren't allowed when I was seniors. We were sneaking out to the backwoods or to, you know, around the corner right. to smoke. So you could no longer. But 1986, f- smoking was fully acceptable in the student lounge. Right. So this is 1992 or 1993. I don't think it was like called the smoking porch. Like, I don't think we were Wait, allowed. did I say 1996? Or no, 19- you said 86. Okay, good. Uh, so I don't think this was like the dedicated smoking area. Like, I don't think it was allowed per se, but I think it was just like, if you're going to smoke, go over there and smoke. And like, Mm -hmm. we won't even bother you kind of thing. So I'm new at the school. I'm living at the school. I find my people. I don't smoke. I never have. And everybody's smoking. So what do I do? You know, I got to go outside with everybody. I got to meet people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, give me one of those, you know? And same thing. Like, I'm pretending to smoke. I don't inhale. Like, I don't know how. Mm-hmm. I think it took me about a week to realize how or learn how to inhale. And from what I remember my first inhale, I'm like, I'm done. This is fucking amazing. Right. I'm in. But, but it was that whole bonding thing. It was that whole, like, this is how you meet people. This is how. And, it, it you know, it was it, it wasn't just like a certain type of person that were smokers. It was... You know, it was everybody a little was bit smoking. sprinkled in of everybody. Yeah, me too everybody. in high school, for sure. Yeah, so it was it was amazing to be able to just to meet everybody out there and then get introduced. Like, that's just how it happened. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I actually looked up uh, ADHD and smoking. Okay. I was really interested in that. And CHAD, which is the leading nonprofit or nonprofit organization serving the ADHD community, said researchers have shown that people with ADHD smoke their first cigarette at a younger age than their peers. They start smoking daily sooner and progress more rapidly from first cigarette to daily smoking. Plus, when they try to quit, they're typically relapse more often than smokers who don't have ADHD. Therefore, whether you look at smoking initiation, maintenance of smoking behavior, or smoking secession, people with ADHD appear to have more difficulties. That makes so much sense to me. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's you constantly have to be moving or whatever. There's the, it's the motion of the back and forth. I think it probably somehow, um, you know, keeps you regulated and calms you a little bit, even though I know it has terrible consequences. But I, that makes so much sense to me. And I think probably as someone with ADHD, it probably like clicked with you pretty fast. No, it does make sense because I I always needed to be moving. I always needed mm-hmm. to be doing something. I always needed to be fidgeting. And that solves kind of all the things. Except, you know, when you get that like nicotine rush, that kind of escalates the the heart racing and oh uh, yeah you know, i'm sure like, it's multi-layered and yeah. you know of so, course i'm not saying oh it's a great solution for adhd yeah. i'm saying it makes sense why you would get hooked yeah. more easily yeah because you're you're physically doing something mm-hmm. constantly mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. it does make sense mm-hmm. yep <laughs> <laughs> what else um okay so anything else about smoking yeah because- yeah so i you know i have a few things that are interesting so uh, the history sort of, when do you think the first state enacted a statewide smoking ban? When? A wh- statewide smoking ban. Well, the first one was for restaurants. Wait, oh, it's got to be California. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. And it has to be in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. You should go on Jeopardy. <laughs> you should yeah. go on Smoking I would, Jeopardy. <laughs> smoking Jeopardy. Because other than that. You should go on Vices. Je- <laughs> right. You should have a Vices Jeopardy. I'm going to make one for the next episode. You should. And we're going to do a game yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we should. We haven't talk- done a game show since Wait a like, minute. our first year. As part of our next episode, can we like quiz each other on this stuff? Yeah. Okay. Let's do, we'll do a Jeopardy. Oh, remember? you're going down. We did one. Just don't ask you know me what? dates. Wait a minute. We did one and never released it. I remember this. I well, s- there's got to be a, a, not for vices. No, no, no. Like a Jeopardy game show, like a fun, oh. and we never released it. I have it. We never. No. Well, let's do another one. Damn, we got to do that. We're that different was fun. people now. I know. 
But no, no, the yes, game show. in 1995, California was the first state to enact a statewide smoking ban for restaurants. 2003, dozens of U.S. airports, including airline clubs, passenger terminals, and non-public work areas are designated as smoke-free. Connecticut and New York enact comprehensive smoke-free laws. Maine enacts a law requiring bars, pool halls, and bingo venues to be smoke-free. <laughs> Um, Listen, I think that makes sense. I kind of get that. Oh, of course. Um, I 100% get it. When they passed these laws, I was a full-time pack-a-day smoker. And I was like, fuck this. They're all going to close. Fuck them. Like, oh, never I go to a bar again. No, no, no. But now, like, looking back, I'm of like, course. oh, yeah, completely makes sense. But also, and I agree, I think that all places, you know, public places with non-smokers and smokers should be smoke-free. I am 100% in support mm-hmm. of that. Why should you suffer because I can't get my shit together, right? But I also think, so Jacob Greer, he's he's a writer, um, and he did an interview with, he wrote a book all about, like, smoking and, you know, the, the, the consequences. And, and he's anti-cigarette. Like, he's not a smoker. Mm-hmm. He doesn't believe. But... He wrote, you know, kind of as what, like we were saying before, as someone who can see the the compassionate side of people who have vices and stuff like that. He's he writes in an interview. Um, you know the the magazine, The Eater. No. As a foodie, you I, should. I, the Eater. Yeah. It's Is not about like oral porn? sex. No. no. It's about no the Eater. It's like a if you saw the um the font and everything of it, you would. Did you see a magazine? Every, it's an online magazine. Oh, okay. Whatever. So <laughs> he says, I, uh, I don't want to go back to the 60s. I don't wish that we were surrounded by cigarette smoke right now. But I do think we've gone too far in denying smokers any place to socialize. Mm-hmm. And so if you have spaces and businesses where you really are catering specifically to smokers and want to create a social space for those people, then the law should accommodate that. Mm-hmm. I think. Shh, no, I'm, I'm just. I know. Go ahead. I think there's a big class element at play where we often do carve out a space for an upscale cigar bar, but we eject blue collar people who want to smoke cigarettes. And so part of it is just giving people who want to do this activity a legal place where they can do so. So they're not being stigmatized and not being kicked out into the street and having to hang in the alley. For me, it's about just basic respect for the dignity of people who have chosen to smoke. And even though I don't like cigarettes, But if you look at harms to other people as opposed to the user, there's a lot of fears about secondhand smoke. But the harms of drunk driving are even more undeniable. Mm -hmm. And you can afford, uh, excuse me, avoid secondhand smoke by not going to a smoky bar. You can't exactly choose to avoid junk drunk drivers. Mm -hmm. I have trouble with that. Unless you stay in your house and never leave. Agreed. So I think what he's, you know, what he's basically saying is that, look, you have to get a license to sell alcohol, right? And you can get alcohol everywhere. It's pervasive. It's everywhere. And and which, you know, obviously it's it's unregulated in some sense because you then have people leave and go out and drive home, mm-hmm. which even with Uber and, and everything, people do that. Um, but with smoking, if you have a place where you have to, let's say you have to have, you know, there's a few smoking licenses in a city and you can open, you know, there are cigar bars all over New York city, right? You know, where you can private sit, clubs, private clubs yes. because they're for business people yep. and they are, you know, mm-hmm. they're wealthy and they're upscale and they spend a lot of money buying these expensive cigars. But again, if you smoke a cigarette, you're going out into the alley, you're leaving the, the, the filter in the alley, you know, you're, you're, you're littering, you're all of these things. Whereas if you had a private spot, just for smokers nobody has to go there people will because people smoke but why are we giving you know and and like he's saying it's mostly blue collar people who have nowhere to go and you know and hang out and then they're drinking in the streets smoking in the streets people are you know you look at like uh new orleans you know when people are drinking and smoking in the streets every city you know and that's allowed in new orleans mm-hmm. every city you know it doesn't allow that but i think that there's something to be said for we we allow alcohol everywhere and and the ramifications of alcohol affect many more people 
then, you know, you, you're if you leave and drive home, everyone's life you interact with is in danger. You know, some people get aggressive when they drink or there are way more dangers than having a, a bar or a restaurant where you can smoke. But no one has to go there if they don't want. Mm hmm. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? I understand everything. A, I agree with everything. Oh, okay, good. I I have so many feelings about this mm. stuff. I have... Right. I don't ever... I will never smoke in a public place. I don't ever want someone to inhale what I smoke. Like, that's not fair. Mm -hmm. But to yeah. have a license it's where... It's all about money. Right. It's, it's right. They're it not is. making money from people smoking cigarettes all about in the money. bar. Right, yep. right, right. You know how much money they're making on those cigar bars? You know how much right. money people are spending when right. they go there on alcohol yeah. and cigars right. and lockers yeah. to I store their cigars? I don't know. I feel like and... people... I don't know. The compassion. Again, the compassion. There are, you know, people... If Look... Again, I say, I'll say it again. I'm a very privileged person and everything. And I feel like I need vices for people who are not as privileged and who don't have access to all of the things and all of the resources. My God, let them smoke a fucking cigarette if they want. I don't want them to get sick and die. <laughs> I just want them to be able to, you know, yeah, like, of course. Come on. Yeah. So anyway, all right. shit. Yeah. All right. So that was topic number one. No, I, I'm OK. We're going to continue with that in top in the next episode. I have more. No, we can't keep going on smoking. We have 10 more vices to go through. OK, well, this right. is the best we'll, one we'll, to talk about. All right. Fine. We'll we'll do it again. We'll, we'll make this. Should we make it like a uh, mini series? A mini series. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thing? Yes. Yeah. Tune in to our channel. Yeah. <laughs> Which should be an after school special. Watch our program. We are the anti after school special. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but no, I have. So, I mean, we didn't. You know, we didn't touch drinking and gambling and shopping and food. This is a topic that I could talk all day about. But I am. I there's so much more. All right, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. We'll. Yes. Yes. We do not endorse anything we talked about. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is our own story. No one should copy. Right. Don't do what we do. Don't wait. Some don't things do what we do. What do, we do, do in many ways, wait, we're very, very good humans. Do what we do, don't do as we say. Is that no? I don't know. Just we are good humans. Follow our actions in some ways, but the, the, not like pick and choose. Pick and choose. Yeah, we're a la carte. Do Adam and Danielle in moderation. Yeah, we're a la carte operation. <laughs> you pick and choose what you want to what you want to follow. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, we're done. Right. We're I think, done. Yeah, we got to be done for now. Okay. Good. Okay. I mean, not good. I'm enjoying this. I know. But Right, oh, well, you can tell I'm enjoying it by the <laughs> holy shit. Look at my, I'm looking at our, uh, our, our audio wave. Yeah. Our, thank you. Audio yeah. wave. And oh man. Yeah. I'm you sorry. went on a rant. Yeah. Sorry. 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 Yeah, sorry. Sorry. No, you sorry. were great. I oh, loved thanks. it. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks very much. We'll be back next time with, I guess, smoking part two. <laughs> I don't know. In that case, rate and review. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, don't rate and review unless you understand no, just sympathize <laughs> compassion all right. those things no what what i don't know okay. but uh otherwise and also uh we are really really good at writing books we have good it, information uh, in there. i am amazing at writing books um and you can go on amazon now and buy or you can go to our website mm -hmm. uh www <laughs> <laughs> you forgot the https -T -T colon dot uh marriage and com slash dnq that's a great way to support us and rating reviewing and apple or spotify is also a great way to and if you buy the date night questions on our website only for podcast listeners m, &M podcast is that it M &M? I don't remember. Eminem Our... Pod has. We'll put it on the show notes. Okay. Just click. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Click and go. Thanks, guys. All right. We love you. Love Thank you. you. Don't judge us. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>